When it comes to space, it is highly likely that we will never learn the answer to every single mystery that lies hidden amongst the infinite depths. However, every day we continue to add to our knowledge base about how the mysterious expanse of space operates beyond the familiar atmosphere of Earth. Be it raining diamonds or planets disappearing, scientists never know what they will discover next when it comes to space. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be looking at three of the most recent space discoveries and what they might mean for those of us stuck here on Earth. New Jupiter Photographs Because we will likely never be able to set foot on many of the neighboring planets in our solar system due to their lethal composition of poisonous gases and inhospitable atmospheres, the best way for scientists to learn about these planets is through photographs. And, as telescopes and satellites improve every year, we are able to uncover new information about these unwelcoming neighbors all the time. Recently, photographs taken of Jupiter by the Hubble Telescope and the near-infrared imager at Gemini North in Hawaii were able to shed some light on the tumultuous and stormy atmosphere that has made the enormous planet so famous. Out of all of the storms that swirl and rage across Jupiter's surface, it is its great red spot which is its claim to fame. However, strangely, the great red spot, which features prominently in photographs taken of the planet, is not so great at all in infrared renditions of these recent Hubble telescope photographs, which display the planet in multiple wavelengths. Scientists and researchers are hoping that this opportunity to view the gas giant from several different wavelengths will give them a better idea of what is driving these massive storms. The images of the boiling, gaseous clouds that make up the atmosphere of Jupiter were captured in infrared, visible and ultraviolet wavelengths, and when compared side by side, consist of several interesting changes. Most notably was the prominence of the Great Red Spot and its smaller, younger offshoot, Red Spot Junior, in the visible and ultraviolet images and its subsequent disappearance in the infrared rendition as well as a cyclonic vortex streaking brightly through the atmosphere in the infrared image. These wavelengths can create such differing images because they each capture a different, unique property of the atmosphere of Jupiter. For example, the Great Red Spot and Red Spot Junior appear red because they are absorbing blue and ultraviolet light, meaning that they show up more prominently in the visible and ultraviolet light images and disappear amongst the cooler clouds of the infrared while the infrared versions capture these stormy areas covered with thick, chocking clouds. This is why the massive vortex appears so clearly in the infrared photograph, as the swirling storm clouds that compose the vortex are able to be clearly defined by infrared light. Although all three versions capture the characteristic rotational swirl of the standard stormy atmospheric clouds, the cyclonic vortex that shone so brightly in the infrared image was especially interesting to scientists, as it expands almost 72,000 kilometers across Jupiter's northern hemisphere and is made up of multiple smaller vortices. The strip of cyclonic storms is usually captured as a characteristic, so-called brown barge, when photographed in visible light, while it was almost indecipherable in the ultraviolet image. However, it shone brightly in the infrared rendition, appearing as a glowing stripe streaking across the enormous planet. Researchers hope to combine this wavelength data with records of radio signals detecting lightning in Jupiter's atmosphere in order to further study and discern the types of layers and cloud structure composing the massive planet in the hopes that they may be able to learn more about what is driving these endlessly swirling storms across the famous gas giant over the solar system. Storms make it rain diamonds on Jupiter and Saturn. Jewelers and diamond aficionados everywhere likely began salivating when they heard the news stemming from recently analyzed data collected from Jupiter and Saturn. It appears likely that it rains massive diamonds from the atmospheres of these gigantic planets. Scientists recently studied the catalogue of recorded pressures and temperatures for both of the gaseous planets and then created models that estimated how carbon would behave under those conditions, leading to the astonishing revelation that diamond rain is incredibly likely. And as far-fetched as this may seem, it is not as harebrained as you might think. Diamonds are formed when carbon, a rather ordinary element, is heated and compressed in extreme instances. 
On Earth, it takes being over 160 kilometers below the surface for conditions to be favorable for diamond creation due to the proximity to the lethal heat of magma, which then brings them closer to the surface for mining. But it seems that on Jupiter and Saturn, the required heat and pressure can be provided by the dense atmosphere and forceful gravitational pull alone. This means that, essentially, large diamonds are likely being created in mid-air and raining down to the surface from the skies. Carbon soot is formed when methane gas is struck by the powerful lightning storms that abound in the gaseous stormy atmospheres on Jupiter and Saturn and becomes increasingly pressurized as it begins to fall through the atmosphere. At around 1,600 kilometers down, it turns to graphite, and then becomes diamonds at around 6,000 kilometers. However, unfortunately, the surfaces of the planets are not piled high with valuable gems, as the newly formed diamonds begin to sink towards the interior of the planet on liquid methane and hydrogen and slowly melt back into molten carbon due to the nightmarish pressure and heat. Even more amazingly is the fact that Jupiter and Saturn are not the first speculative diamond factories in the solar system. Scientists have long believed that Neptune and Uranus have abundant diamond cores, despite their smaller, cooler size, and wrote off the much hotter, larger Saturn and Jupiter, believing that their atmospheres were not suitable for diamond formation. However, it now appears that, based on the recent analysis of data from the two planets, it is quite literally raining diamonds, and an astonishing amount at that. Saturn seems especially prone to diamond formation, and researcher Kevin Baines from the University of Madison, Wisconsin and NASA at JPL reported in an interview with BBC News that scientists suspect that an astonishing 2.2 million pounds of diamonds are formed from the atmosphere every year. Although more studies of the environments and atmosphere of Jupiter and Saturn are currently being conducted surrounding this astonishing revelation, we cannot help but be a little sad that the crushing pressure and searing heat would immediately melt any spaceship attempting to enter the atmosphere in search of a sample of atmospheric diamond chunks. Scientists say that Pluto is disappearing. When it comes to the space that surrounds us in incomprehensible proportions, many believe that change is rather rare. However, this is not the case, and it seems that one major change may be occurring sooner rather than later the partial disappearance of an entire dwarf planet. A new study that observed photographs taken of a well-lit Pluto during its passage in front of an exceptionally bright star has revealed that scientists believe Pluto might be undergoing an astonishing transformation. Based on the gathered evidence, it appears that Pluto's atmosphere is beginning to vanish as a result of its long-documented slow migration further and further from the Sun. Researchers believe that this has caused its nitrogenous atmosphere, not unlike that of our own planets, to begin to decrease Pluto's surface temperature. This has apparently caused Pluto's atmosphere to refreeze back to the surface in a process that will only continue to be exacerbated as the planet moves further from the Sun and decrease in temperature. Part of the reason why the atmosphere is undergoing such change could be due to the fact that Pluto has an irregular orbit. It takes about 248 Earth years for Pluto to complete a single orbit, and it circles in a very angular ellipsoid around the Sun, meaning that at some points it is only 30 astronomical units from the Sun and is able to be impacted by its heat, while at other points in its long orbit, Pluto rotates a frigid 50 astronomical units away from the Sun. Because it is currently at one of the coldest points of its orbit, the atmosphere is quite literally refreezing back onto the planet itself. The recent data revealing this declining atmosphere was gathered based on observations made by researchers at Southwest Research Institute during a critical point in Pluto's orbit as it passed in front of an exceptionally bright star which allowed calculations to be made about the changing atmospheric density of the planet based on the amount of light available during its passage. Dr. Leslie Young a staff scientist at Southwest Research Institute said that the continued persistence of Pluto's atmosphere suggests that nitrogen ice reservoirs on Pluto's surface were kept warm by stored heat under the surface. The new data suggests that they are starting to cool. Although Pluto's nitrogenous atmosphere is similar to that of Earth's, it is unlike it in the fact that it is completely dependent on the vapor pressure generated by the surface ices. 
When this surface ice changes even a small amount, the atmosphere is greatly impacted. As Pluto continues to move further from the Sun, this atmospheric disappearance becomes more and more pronounced. But what do you make of these recent space discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.